Hello YouTubers, Joe Kersey here on uh, September 29th, about 4.30 in the afternoon Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, 5 till 5. Oh, it's, it's, it's 16.55 Eastern Daylight Time, I stand corrected. And, uh, See, I got the yeah, he's got the big, big watch there. I mean, he can clock somebody in the head with that thing if he needed to. Now, now Paul uh, has the next two days off, and uh, in good news, his uh, gastric and GI and general constitutional distress abated today, so that that's good news. And uh, he also brought home a uh, Coleman camp stove. Still in the truck. It's still in the truck. But apparently, uh, it took me a while to realize what he was talking about with this Coleman camp stove. It's one of these, it's like a two burner camp stove. But apparently the uh, the tank, the gas tank is inside. Yeah, it says fill fuel here. It's not, oh, it's, 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 it's integral with the unit. It's not one of these things you detach and. No. Because see, the ones I grew up with, you know, they had the red tank and they had a long nozzle on it, and you had to sort of load the thing in. And but yeah, this, but so, the same here. When I was a kid, we had them. Yeah. When we were on road trips and yeah. stuff, you always had like a tank on the outside of the thing. But this thing's inside. Yeah. Uh, see, I don't. I'm. I don't know. I my. Plus, that stuff uses gasoline. I. Want to go get it? No, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to feature this thing, but, um, you know, it's, it's worthwhile keeping around, I don't know, maybe Thomas will want it, or somebody at church will want it, or, hell, maybe we'll, we'll use it at some point, but, uh, I mean, they are nice things, I don't know if I'd like the thing where you, uh, well, I'd have, I'd have to look at it. Meanwhile, then, um, as I said, Paul's off tomorrow and Wednesday. Is that correct, Paul? Yep. Okay. Now, now today's been a day beset by the Malaysian shield bugs. <laughs> and uh, they've become very aggressive. Um, I, I take this as a sign that we're going to have some relatively recent, you know, relatively you know, there's some 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 cold weather that kills these things relatively soon. By relatively soon, I mean within the next two and a half weeks. Uh, you know, they're they're doing their best to mess with you while they've got time. And the same with the uh, with the ground hornets, uh, although they've not been particularly bad this year at all. They haven't been bad at all for several years. Um, now, as you might imagine, my day uh, was taken up with YouTube, and uh, I got an ex you know I got a message from a fellow uh, or a comment from a fellow that. Uh, said he didn't like, uh, he, he, he had actually commented very favorably on one of my videos, and then on another video, he, the one where I talked about this dinner down at my friend's house in South Central North Carolina, uh, he had uh, said, oh, I, well, let's see, I want to, I want to, I want to represent his opinion accurately. Uh, he had said, oh, now people can't speak their minds and have opinions. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, anybody who knows me knows that I don't agree with that. I mean, I mean, you know, everybody should speak their mind and have opinions. Um, I, you know, I wasn't trying to suppress free speech. Far be, you know. Far be it. 
And then he went on to make a point. He said, people shouldn't offer opinions on other people's opinions on YouTube. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, I think that's exactly sort of what YouTube's designed to do. You know, as well as provide a venue for people who want to put up entertainment and that sort of thing. So he unsubscribed. Well, there we are. Um, but I was, I was interested in that because he completely misinterpreted my remarks. See, uh, for me, this wasn't so much a content issue, although the opinion expressed was quite hateful. For me, the issue was a courtesy issue, that you'd behave that way and, and treat somebody that you knew to be gay that discourteously. And then, and then for my friend, the issue was, you know, for me, the issue with my friend was that he didn't apologize for that awkward situation. Okay, well, we've covered that. But uh, it's interesting how people misunderstand uh, one's remarks and intentions. Now, having, <laughs> having said that, I'm reminded of another night down there in that town in South Central North Carolina where we went to the country club and uh, this was a country club that had, uh, had a golf course course uh, and it was, in, it was right on the edge of the low country and so you'd have the occasional alligator roam around the course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, one night uh, I went, I went down there and walked behind the group of these folks that were playing, and you know, and you'd, you know, over by the over by the creek, you'd see, you know, an alligator. You know, doing this. Uh, well, anyway, uh, they were having some sort of party or dance. I. Well, it was a party with a dance. I think what it was was it was, a, it was a it was a birthday party for one of the oldest members of the club, or an anniversary of the club, or yeah, it had to be one of the because there was sort of like a room where you had the high back chairs, and the older members of the club were in there, and it was sort of like a they're holding court, and you went in and you shook their hands and that sort of thing. That's fine, and. Uh, Exchanged some words. Had a bit of a snort or two and that sort of thing. And unfortunately, uh, this is one of these joints where the members had their liquor bottles in the locker downstairs. They had a locker room downstairs and when they had they kept their liquor bottles in the locker. You know, they didn't sell club. They didn't, you know, they didn't serve alcohol officially, but that's how it worked. It's the South, guys. Come prepared. Yeah, we got to come prepared. Uh, I had come prepared because I, I got pretty much tanked up before I went over there because I knew I might not get much, and, uh, and I knew if I had to put up with this kind of stuff, I'd have to have a little fortification. Um, but you know, we had a little buffet, and it was quite good. It was very nice, and. Uh, you know, and the people were very nice and very pleasant. And then they actually brought in one of these uh, DJs. You know, no, no, get this. You got a DJ for a party for basically what a you know for a 96 year old guy. <laughs> well, he was a very lively 96 year old guy. I mean, he was a lot of fun. I mean, I I knew him. I mean, he was great, great, great fun to be around. And. Uh, So, who? No, no, it was it was uh, uh, it, w it wasn't Mac. It was 
well, I can't remember, but it was, I had met the guy several times before. He was very nice. And um, so uh, it seems that the dancing ensued to this music. Now, when I'm listening, you know, in that setting, I just like to sort of stand on the side and listen to music, kind of like junior high school, wouldn't it? And, uh, uh, but this, this very aggressive real estate woman, <clears throat> realtor, to use the proper term that they like. Pardon? Real trick. Woman, she's a real trick. Oh, yeah, yeah, real. oh, real. Oh, yes, Paul points out I should really call her a real a tricks. Uh, good point, excellent. And uh, <laughs> so uh, she uh, she slinked over to me. I guess she liked the cut of my jib and uh, insisted I dance with her. Okay, well, you know, it's a social, you can't refuse to do that. I mean, it's it's the South, guys. Uh, so, you know, and again, I didn't want to be disruptive to my friends sort of standing in town and that sort of thing. Or at the country club. <laughs> and uh, so, now we're sort of dancing, you know, now I don't dance, but, you know, I sort of did the usual, you know, hands on the shoulders sort of thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to dance. I don't know how to dance. I don't like to dance. I certainly didn't want to dance with her. And uh, she starts rubbing against me. Sort of. Oh, I thought, my, I thought she was a, might have been a dude the way she was sort of thrusting her crotch against me. And uh, she, she, she was a little bit more of a turn on in a way than some dudes that have thrust their crotch against me. But, uh, oh, that just slipped out. Sorry. Anyway, uh, well, you know, the music sort of ended briefly and then, and I thought, well, that, I thought I'm shit of her. No, 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 no. She, she came back after, you know, she came back when the next sort of set started. And then, sort of, you know, into it, she suggested we go home to her house. Let's come on, let's, let's just go to my place. And, you know, I had, I had enough that I was, you no, know, I had enough to drink that I was basically just in a very benign mood. I'd been having a good time, I mean, even even with having to be thrust up against this woman. And I just I just laughed. And I, you know, I, I said, you know, you are barking up the wrong tree here, honey. You have, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, it's kind of an open secret around here. I'm gay. You are just barking up the wrong tree. And she took that fairly well and she retreated. And so then I was able to just not have to put up with that the rest of the night. So that was, that was my adventure at the country club. I've told you this before, haven't I, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. I thought I had, yeah. <laughs> so... Well, there it is. Life in the South, in South Central North Carolina at the Country Club. Alrighty now, I'm going to say bye-bye, YouTubers. Anything more to say, Paul? All the women over at the end think you're hot because they've been watching her stuff. My heavens. <laughs> so, there you are. Well, I've got a female <laughs> following, but that's not the kind of following I really want, is it? I know. <laughs> Alrighty, bye bye YouTubers.